Hello everyone and welcome to my another tutorial. Text recognition with TensorFlow and CTC network. So if you came to this tutorial, you should know that extracting text of different sizes, shapes and orientations from images is a fundamental problem in many contexts, especially in augmented reality systems, e-commerce and context moderation on social media platforms. To solve this problem, we need to extract text from images very accurately. So there are two most popular methods that we could use to extract text from images. First one is we can localize text in images using tag detectors or segmentators and then extract localized text and that's way more straightforward way. And there is another way we can train a model that achieves both detector and, and recognition with a single model. And that's a hard way, it's hardcore. So in this tutorial, I will focus only a word extraction part from the whole OCR pipeline. Because if I would like to cover everything, it might take hours of covering it and making and writing tutorials about and etc. So, but it's valuable to know the pipeline of the most popular OCRs available today. As I said, most pipelines contain a text detection step and text recognition step. So first, what is text detection? Well, it actually helps you identify the location of an image that contains text. It takes an image as input and gives boxes with coordinates as output where text is. And the second step is text recognition. Extracts text. This step extracts text from an image input using bounding boxes derived from a text detection model. It inputs an image with cropped image uh, parts using the bounding boxes from the detector and outputs a raw text. So the text detection is very similar uh, to the object detection task, where the object which needs to be detected is nothing more but the text. Much research has taken place in the field of text text out of image accurately, and many detectors detect text at the word level. However, the problem with word level text is that they fail to notice word of arbitrary shape that are rotated, curves, stretched, and etc. But it was proven that we could achieve even better results by using various segmentation techniques instead of using detectors. Exploring each character and the spacing between characters helps to detect various shaped texts. So, for the text detection, you can choose other popular techniques, but as I already mentioned, it, it would be too complex and an extensive tutorial to cover both. So, I will focus only on exploring the CTC networks for text recognition in this tutorial. So, I note that when developing various things, uh, I must re-implement things by word using over and over. So why not simplifying this by creating a library to hold all this stuff? So with this tutorial, I'm starting a new machine learning training utility called, called MLTU library that I will open source on GitHub, where I'll save all my tutorials that I'll cover now and in the future, and I'll publish them in the tutorials folder under this library. You can find tutor the, the link to this GitHub repository in my, well, description of this video. So I will not jump straight to code. I'll do this step by step. So after the text localization step, regions containing text are cropped and sent through CNN layers to extract image features. These features are later fed into many-to-many -many LSTM architecture that output softmax probabilities via the dictionary. These outputs at different time steps are provided to the CTC decoder to obtain the raw text from the images. I will cover each step in detail in the in this tutorial, but a little later. First, let's look at the my TensorFlow model to understand how we connect the C CNL layer with LSTM layer. This tutorial this is not a beginner level because I'm here covering not everything step by step, but only the most important parts. I'll probably post some of the codes here in my text version tutorial, deeper code parts. And But if you want to get deeper, I recommend going straight to my GitHub repository, to my tutorials and to the first tutorial because I'm recording it right now.
And of course, the link to that GitHub is below in this video description. And to run this, of course, you need to either install uh, this MLT library for, with, from a cloned repository, or either you can do the pip install MLT equal 0.1.3. It's recommended. I, I recommend this version for this tutorial. So let's go to the code right now and let's look what I have here. And and you might see that here is my train model and this MLTU. And simply I'll start with a model. It's pretty simple and I don't know. And if you need something very hard. So especially here is the input dimension. It's, it's my image dimension. For example, it might be 32 by 128. 128 is the length of the image and that's pretty understandable here. Yeah? And now I borrowed some idea from ResNet implementation to make a better convolution neural network so they convolve better a little. So here's a residual blocks that come from my MLT library. I simply put the blocks here. So uh, I, I believe I'll use this kind of architecture in coming five to I don't know tutorials and this my this is really works good for me usually and as you can see here is the last hidden layer that gives us some kind of output and we are not sure right now what is the output but if we would create the model we can type model summary and it would give us something but the problem here is that here is three shapes i mean there is a uh, three axes and of course batches so it's four four axes and lstm accepts only one batch uh, layer and two additional layers so that's kind of simple what we need to do here is i need to reshape this and this i simply multiply set, two of these axes and one of them I leave and this is a uh, features axis here and simply I receive this kind of squeezed output that I feed later to LSTM and after this I receive the BLSTM that I can simply use as a softmax activation and use a dense to give me the output for it as you can see that's pretty simple and I don't know uh, you, you, of course you must be familiar to know uh, what I'm doing here, but well, if you're new to here, go step by step, run it in a bigger mode and you can understand everything how, how you want. So this might give you unlimited information if you're unfamiliar with TensorFlow, but the idea here is to create a model with the correct output for, for CTC loss function. To do, so, to do so, we must transition from CNN to LSTM layer, as I explained right now. So to make everything right, we must ensure that the last layer meets the requirements for CTC loss function. Here I have, for example, 63 in my worst data set. Well, this is my output dimension in my worst data set. I now have 62 different checks, but we need to increment it by one because we need additional separation token that is used for padding. And padding is because when we feed batch to our network, uh, the width and height of data should match, so it would be processed as a matrix. So that's like a must. So that's it. And for example, I also have two five six, uh, as you may see here, uh, and and this is the multiplication of my layers because here as output would be eight and here would be something like a 32 and when we multiply it's 256 and that's quite quite nice and it should be larger than than your maximum word length in your uh, label data set because well this is how ctc works it it must be at least twice as larger than your world maximum word length in a data set next i must cover the lstm well a little bit i'm not covering it uh, deeply so in this image uh, you can see that there is an input or 32 by 128 size is it is sent through convolution layers 
then these layers are designed so that as a result we obtain a feature maps of the shape 8 by 32 by 64 and none here is the batch size that could take any value and this is well this is exactly what you might see on your model output and this is this can be easily reshaped so when i multiply 8 by 32 and use the 64 as my last dimension i reshaped to this dimension and then we can use this in to the input of my lstm and this in this way uh, my shape final shape is by bad size number of time steps and word embeddings dimension and that's it uh, my model is ready to be used for CTC loss with TensorFlow. Later, these feature maps are fed to the LSTM model. Uh, as shown in following image, you might be thinking now that LSTM models are known to work with sequential data and how feature maps are sequential. But the idea here is that CNN layers reshape the sequences while changing the view with its layers. As a result, we get a softmax probability over vocabulary from LSTM model for every time step. In example, we have 256. Now, let us move on to the ex exciting part of the tutorial on calculating the loss value for this architecture setup. Uh, of course, it's very hard, so it might be hard for me to explain. I'll give you a short explanation about CTC loss and why do we use it. So this is an extensive topic for which I could create another whole explanation tutorial. But because there is already plenty of articles about CTC loss, I'll mention only the entire idea about that. Of course, we could create a dataset with images or text, strings, and then specify the corresponding symbol for each horizontal image position. We could train the neural networks to output the chart the score for each horizontal position using the categorical cross entropy as the loss. However, this there is a lot of problems that my face. It's very time consuming and tedious to annotate data set and the at the charitable level. It's very hard to separate, for example, words where we have hello and there's two L letters. And there's many English words that, and also in other languages that are really hard to annotate and separate. And also, how about the speech recognition? Can you imagine that you would need to annotate uh, all the letters in the word and specify in a spectrogram where is, uh, for example, good, where is G, O, O, and D are separated and etc. That would be, uh, I don't know, it, it would be hardest wor work in the world to do so. So the CTC uh, solved these problems for us. So while training the model with CTC laws, function we only need to know the extract word uh, uh, that is in the image or the sound is for which therefore we ignore both the position the width of the symbol in the image or audio spectrogram the recognized text does not require further processing for us it's simply need to be converted from numerical to string form and that's it we have the answer so, to distinguish between two consecutive tokens and duplicate tokens, a separation token is used as already mentioned before. The best way to understand how it works would be to imagine that we are working with a sound data that says good, for example. I don't know, it, it's really hard to explain this in a in word, but I'll... In the text version tool, it's way easier to understand because when I write home, for example, it's really easy to write, the, for example, home with 4 O and, for example, 2 E at the end. And when we remove these kind of duplicate tokens, we receive home. So only the one idea is that we need to separate uh, letters with some kind of separation token. And this is kind of done with CTC loss and CTC decoding. And this is only, this, this is all what is necessary to do. And it calculates the best path based on the most probable symbol per time step when analyzing uh, LSTM output. And, and that's it. So first, I, I, I believe you are interested in the CTC code. I also implemented it in my tutorial. So we'll check this out. And let's get back to the coding part. So uh, I'll only cover some some blocks as I mentioned before. And 
I'm using the Kara CTC batch encoding. And if I'll open my training script, I go down and there is a CTC loss. I'll open this CTC loss. And as you can see, this is my CTC loss uh, that I, I need simply to use as a regular was, uh, loss we use in, in TensorFlow models. And we simply, instead of another loss, we type this loss. And this is kind of specific uh, functions uh, implemented in a TensorFlow that does everything for us. And this loss will be used either in training and validation steps so that you don't need to worry about totally worry about what's going on here in CTC loss. Well, except if you want to write it by yourself from scratch. If so, I'll post the link in, in my text message tutorial. Well, you can find more detailed explanation about how it works. So let's uh, go back to my training code and cover it a little from the top. And, and here is uh, my package, MLTU, as I mentioned, and there I uh, am inserting a lot of packages as data provider, preprocessor, transformers, losses, callbacks, metrics, and etc. And here is my model from train model, as you can see. From uh, I already show you, and there is a model configurations. Well, this is kind of special configurations and we'll save all the configurations that we use for training our models. And the main idea that we need to save the vocabulary. So as well, not the model, but also the vocabulary we'll save here. And of course, there is a, this kind of data set. This is a huge data set. And I, I think it take, takes 10 gigabytes and of course, uh, I don't know if you want to train this uh, stuff, but uh, yeah, I downloaded it. I'll post the link in my text search tours so well, you can download it. And the idea here that there's a lot of images of text and you can see Sandra, there's a lot of them. And I use all these words to train my model and that really works. And this is only a pre-processing step to, to, to pre-process uh, this kind of data, data set. And here you can see I'm saving train data set and it is saved here as a path to the image and as a, as a label of that image correctly. So here is the vocabulary, what is collected from all this data set and the ma maximum training length. And this is the maximum label length actually in my data set that I need to use when I'm constructing my model because the shorter labels I need to, I'll need to pad to this length. And then I'm saving these to my configurations as well. When starting to train it, it will be saved along the mode. Then I use a data provider here and you might ask, what the hell is that? So that's kind of my custom object that I created to simplify everything with our training stuff. So if I open data provider, you might see that it's, uh, inheritance from sequence class and there is a lot of parameters that sh you should be familiar with if you are thinking about using it the, but the idea is here to simplify the training process here because um let, let's go back to the training and you all understand here so for example I i'm here initializing the data provider and i'm giving this train data set and that's it i don't need to worry about it I need to give, give the paths to images and labels. And that's it. I, I said here the batch size for my training stuff. And here, data preprocessors. It, it will be my image reader. And the idea here is that it's simply a CV2 function that will read the images from my disk. And this might be any function if you're working with a voice sound, if you're working with object detection or object segmentation, etc. You simply create another, another image reader, you give this object here and you are fine with that. So then I, I use a transformers that are used after the data processors. And this is image resizer. And this will resize all the images to the same size. So it would be used for my 
trainer and then it's like label indexer my labels are strings and you, uh, we know that tensorflow doesn't accept, accept strings as input i need to convert them to the integers so i use the vocabulary to index my labels and etc and the last step is label padding i need to pad all my labels to be the same length when i'm trading um, and that's I do the same stuff for my training data set and validation data set and they are both the same works both the same way that I am training identifying the training model and so then I'm simply using the compile uh, so the that's how we work. Oh, by the way, if I go back to my data provider, there is a one uh, main loop that it's called get item when we are using fit. And as you can see, uh, it has a for loop that iterates uh, data set batches. And this is our data set. And it, first it calls the preprocessors and then uh, it simply works with them that might be customized and then i use the augmenters and then the transformers and you can play around with them however you want but usually th this kind of stuff works for uh, any any implementation of data you want to train that's kind of simplifies everything you need to change the object object simply here and then uh i here here i, I define my model i I said I compile it with my CTC loss and this Seaver metric. And this is kind of custom metric. And we all know, well, if you're first time here, you don't. But for example, when we are training a model to recognize uh, words, sentences, or sound, it's crucial to validate them. And it's not the best way to validate them with a loss function. It's better to use a character error rate or word error rate. This tells us uh, how, how, how accurately we predict characters according to the true labels or how similar our sentence is to to our true label and th that's it and that's and this is what we do in our callbacks which we which i kind of define here and the most important is uh early stopping and as you can see here i am using validation ser character error rate and if i go to my sever it's ser character error rate and i i received this uh rate here and i can now my callbacks are tracking if my charged error rate is improving while training and if it's not it will stop training here and then of course we are using model checkpoints to save the best model according to the validation chart error rate we tr use a train logger that a log how, what's happening in each e e epoch there and then i use tensorboard and of course, I use reduced learning or Plato that reduces learning rate when it's not improving. And of course, last step, it's kind of custom, but I convert my models into on an X format. And then uh, it doesn't matter if I have a TensorFlow or not, I can port, take this model, shift it to another device, like for example, Raspberry Pi, and I can run inference on my Raspberry Pi without TensorFlow implementation with current inference. And that's it. And as you can hear, I construct a fit uh, function and and I wait for it to finish the training process. That right, is simple and nothing magical. And on the last step, uh, I had my data provider holds uh, uh, data sets and Sometimes we want to save them because, you know, uh, when we are investigating or improving our model, changing model architecture, we want to train on the same data set. And as you can see, this data has trait and validation. So later we can load this CSV to our data provider and we don't need to iterate everything from zero and we simply can work continue working with the same stuff so 
So, uh, I don't want to train this model because I already trained it and because it has 10 gigabytes, the whole data set is 10 gigabytes, which are separate into training and testing. It's pretty huge data set. And of course, I don't want to train it right now because it took a lot of time for me. But of course, don't worry, I'll give a link for you where you can download my model and you, you can test this around. So, but let's go to my training models here. And as you can see here, this is the model I train here. And I'm interested to, to check what is the uh, tensor board of the my logs. So if I open the TensorBoard, log there, and like that. It should uh, load the TensorBoard with the logs uh, it, it collected from training process. And of course, because it, it, this might be huge files, it, it takes some time. And I open my Brave browser and I open this TensorBoard. And as you can see, let's look how these curves look like. And I want to look at the scholars without this kind of. And let's make it larger for you. It will be easier to see. So, for example, you can see that it was zero epoch. The first epoch it started training. And, and yeah, you can definitely see it was tracking child error rate. And each epoch it was decreasing and the validation is blue. So it, the validation is even better than th this orange color. And this is only because that this data set might have a lot of issues. It's not correct. And this was my only for learning purposes. It, I don't know if I could use this data model for something else, but who knows? Who knows? Uh, that, that's the idea how you can use my code to train your own uh, word detector. It's like an OCR where you can begin working on. So uh, right now you can see that it was successfully trained and this model was saved here to own the next. So right. And, and by the way, there is a 22 hours of training process. That's why I said it takes a lot of time. So I'll take this model and we can check some inference results here. Yeah, I, I, I have the data set. So I have here this model and I go to my tutorials and here's the inference model. And I already have all the links ready here. And right now what I would need, there's we only 20 examples. There is a lot of these examples and I'll show this for you. I'll uncomment this and it will be resized. And let's see what I'll get here. Okay, I'll need to close this tensor board. I don't need this anymore. And this tab. So, uh, yeah, let's run this inference model here. And we should see that each prediction it made in a screen in a moment, it initialized a little. So let's wait. Here it is, as you can see, it's Monica, and it was, uh, it has one error, as you can see, and there is Monica, and the true label is Monica, yeah, and the prediction is Honica, but at least, yeah, it's a minor mistake, but still a mistake. Let's look at another one example, Ecclesiastics, well, that's, Chuck error rate is zero. This means that it was predicted accurately, and that's nice. Another year of firestorm, and we can clearly see that it missed the eye here. So that's his mistake. And let's see another example. For example, uh, this one PCI, and the uh, label is PCI and prediction is Well, that's great. And repurchases, and there is one error. Repur choices and instead of a well it's pretty similar to o but you might see that it works amazing and this is a bad label because it, it said it, it's big tail and well my prediction can't understand what the fuck is that so it 
the error is only h h h so that's why i said there's many mistakes in this data set and i know it said more of them but this is not sure about covering these mistakes landladies and etc stiff list that's pretty cool and you might see that it works pretty amazing right so and right now i don't want to run the through the whole data set but the chart the error rate of whole data set it's pretty nice it's only i don't remember it now but it might be around two percent of error so this means that it works really nice and you can use this model to well transfer learning for your other models but keep in mind that your input shape should be the same as this model so it's it might be not the best case for all your solutions but in conclusion uh, that's the end of this tour. I'll put everything on my GitHub and etc. But I will. I need. I need to end this tutorial. I'll, I'll need to go to the more interesting, exciting stuff too. Uh, so extracting text from images is a complex problem that is important in various contexts, including augmented reality, e-commerce, and content moderation. There are two main approaches to extract text from images using text detectors or segmentation techniques to localize text and training a single model that performs text detection and recognition. This tutorial will actually focus on the latter approach combining uh, CNN and LSTM layers with a CTC loss function to extract text from images. The tutorial also introduces a new open source library called MLTU and that will be used to store code for future choice and of course you can use it for your own projects of course so but mainly i want to mention that i try to be as short as possible and explain only the most essential parts um, of this tutorial going deeper it could be expanded into several different tutorials but i still need to do more and i believe you are waiting for more at the end of this tutorial we finally have a working custom ocr model to recognize text from our images as you saw that we train on our own data set that you can also do with your own data set so so this is only the first part of my tutorial series where we learn how to train a custom OCR to recognize text from images. From now on, we can move to another challenging task. And I hope this tutorial was really useful. And of course, you, you can share this uh, tutorial, my GitHub repository with others you can use by yourself and etc. And if you really liked it, you can leave the comments below this video. You can ask me anything. You can like this video. Please smash the like button for this. And of course, share it with anyone. And of course, I'll continue working on this library. I wish to expand this and give you a lot of tutorials how you can, well, just pick and play with them because there is a lot of stuff we can do in one place and our knowledge will expand exponentially so thank you all for watching i hope this tutorial was useful and in the next tutorial i'll show you how to train this model to recognize captures from images so see you there and i wish you a nice day bye